Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to The Jen Thoden Show, the place to be to create your most stylish and confident you. This is episode two, and today's episode we are going to talk, um, well, there's, I'm going to talk a little bit about undertone, because apparently there is a big debate out on my YouTube channel about undertone, so we're going to talk about that a little bit in detail. Uh, we're going to style a blouse that somebody really wants to save, but it's not in their seasonal color palette. We're going to do a seasonal color analysis, and then we're going to end with a, a little bit of a life lesson. All right, so let's dig right into it. Let's talk about undertone. So undertone, when you're trying to figure out what colors look best on you, you either have warm undertone or cool undertone. Now the debate that's happening out on the YouTube channel is um, pe some people are saying, well, what about neutral undertones? Well, a person can seem neutral. They cannot be obvious one way or the, or the other, but you're always still going to ha be warm or cool. It, even if it isn't, even if it isn't obvious, because you ultimately fit into one of the 16 seasons. So you have your spring and your autumns, which have warm undertones, and you have your summers and your winters. You fit into one of them, and if the summer, if you have cool undertones, you're going to be a summer or a winter, and if you have warm undertones, you're going to be a spring or an autumn. Again, it doesn't mean that you can't appear neutral, but you will lean one way or the other, and so. I just want to address some generalities of undertones and what season you might fit in and what to look for, okay? And really, if you uh, need more help with figuring out your season, you can always visit the blog at Alpha Ideas for You, number four, you.com, and uh, look at the quiz, look at examples, and you can always sign up for a personal color analysis, okay? So I'm going to switch to my screen now and let's uh, look at the uh, different examples I have for the undertones. Now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I will be describing enough where you'll get a lot of value from just listening, but you might want to check out the video as as well, okay? All right, so let's talk about warm undertones. Springs have warm undertones, and I chose the tinted spring as the example because it's the most obvious of the warm undertones. If you're a spring, you're going to have a very obvious yellow undertone. You're going to have yellow skin, you're going to have yellow in your hair, and you're going to have yellow in your eyes. You are warm, 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 and it's just you have uh, you're just kind of golden and yellow all over. Now, it, it will vary when you're looking at, say, a pure spring or something like that, but over, ultimately, if you're looking at the photos, you can see the yellow in the person. I'm actually a tinted spring, and you can definitely see the warm undertones, okay? If you switch over to a summer, the difference is, is that you have very pink uh, skin tone, and so pink is actually considered a cool undertone. Okay, so you have your summer, which has pink undertones, and then if you compare that to the spring, you can see the difference. Spring has yellow undertones, summers have pink undertones. Now, when you're looking at someone like that could potentially be a soft summer or a toned summer or shaded summer, that's when it starts to get a little confusing because the skin tone isn't as obviously pink. It can actually even maybe even look a little warm, and that's where people get a little confused and say, well, what about neutral undertones? Mm, you still lean one way or the other, and it, you have to take into account the eyes and the hair as well, not just the skin to figure out what season you ultimately fall into. But if you're looking at the video, you can see that summers have a very pink, cooler tint, springs are warmer. So let's look at autumn. Again, when you look at the collection of photos in the autumn slide, you see golden. Everything is very golden and warm and earthy. You have earthy, hazel eyes. You've got golden skin warmth all over. And it's just a deeper level of warmth than the spring. If I click back over to spring, you can also see the warmth, but it's much lighter and more delicate. And autumns are also warm, but they're much more richer, deeper tones of warm. That's why autumns are warm and deep. Springs are warm and light. Okay? And if you, again, if you switch back over to the summer, now you can start to see the cool pinks and the gray blues about them versus the autumns. 
And then when we switch over to winters, you go back into that cool undertones. They're very deep, cool undertones. And if the women on the right, what you see is that they have olive skin tone. Now this is a very common misunderstanding. People who think they have olive skin tone think that they have warm undertones, but that is not true. Olive skin tones are cool undertones. And if you have olive skin, or it's very obvious you have olive skin, you're very likely a winter. And you'll, you know, you'll kind of know this because you'll have a darker hair, very, everything's deep, and you have these cool, cool, uh, kind of a cool, rich saturation about you, a little bit more high contrast than the other seasons. So you have olive skin tone, and you can see this is a much deeper version of summer. Summer is a lot lighter and much more pink. And then you have your winters, which are also cool, but they have olive skin tones. Again, sometimes it's not very obvious what, what the undertone is, and that's why you have to take into account the eyes and the hair, okay? And that's how you can figure out for sure what season a person falls into, because there are 16 seasons total. I've only shown you four to give you an understanding of undertones, but there are 16 of them, okay? So again, if you want to figure out what season you belong to, please visit the blog. There's a great online quiz you can take. You can also sign up for a personal uh, analysis. If you are trying to do this uh, so you can analyze other people, whether it's professionally or for fun, there's also a course you can take and sign up for. All this is at the blog, outfitideasforyou.com, the number four, y-o-u.com, okay? All right. So let's, well, let's style something. This week, um, one of my clients uh, is cleaning out her closet. She is a toned summer that's uh, also known as a soft summer light. It's a person who is very neutral in their coloring, but ultimately on the cool side. Her skin is pink. Her hair is uh, uh, silvery gray. It's not, um, you know, it's not solid gray. It's got some different variations in there. Her eyes are very cool, pale, uh, a cool gray blue, I should say. A cool gray blue, pink skin. And so she's very... Uh, neutral, very soft overall, no contrast or anything like that. So, and lighter. So the so her colors are more uh, muted and soft and on the cool side. So think of like a dusty pink or a, a mauve. Those are the kind of colors that look great on a toned summer. Well, she has a blouse. Um, you can see in the photo, and I'll describe it for the podcast. It is a navy blue blouse with a v-neck, and it has a very vivid pattern on it. It is sort of like a diagonal stripes with a white taupe and a bright clear red, and it's uh, just too strong for her. When you're thinking about patterns for a toned summer, everything about a toned summer is low contrast, and so therefore you really want your patterns to also be low contrast. Vivid patterns on a toned summer tend to wear the, the person. You see the, you see the pattern before you ever see the person, and that's not what you want. You want to be in harmony with your coloring and your, um, and your clothes. Everything kind of needs to be in harmony. So if your coloring overall is low contrast, kind of like me, I have kind of low contrast between eyes, hair, and skin. The clothing you should wear should also be low contrast. And so this blouse isn't her best choice, but she loves it and she wants to know how she can keep it. Now, first of all, when you compare her blouse to the actual toned summer colors, all the colors are right. There's actually a true red, a navy blue, a taupe, and a soft white, all in the Tone Summer color palette. So it's not like she's wrong. It's just the combination is so vivid. So I thought we would style this blouse so that we can kind of tone things down and kind of balance them out for her. For her. So you're not just seeing the blouse when you see her. You see more of an ensemble of complementary colors that complement her hair and her eyes and her skin tone. So I played around a little bit I think ultimately what, what looks really nice is that, first of all, the, the, the V-neck that's on her is a little bit too deep. Uh, so I put underneath a, a navy blue, uh, it could be a tank top, a camisole, something that's kind of straight and gives, and gives a little bit of a solid navy uh, to the V-neck. 
okay, and that, and to, to bring in some balance to that blouse. And then I styled over the top of it a soft white linen blazer. Um, the photo, I just put white on there. You know, I wasn't going to spend too much time trying to collage different photos, but um, I would suggest you find a, a soft white, and linen typically ends up being soft, and layering that over the blouse. And what that does is it brings, it kind of brings the eye, it kind of calms the, the color combination, I should say. It, it's, we're, we're, we're kind of hiding away a lot of the bold pattern. We're bringing in a softer, cooler color to tone things down. I tried putting on other colors on top of this to tone things down, but it really wasn't working. Red was too powerful. Taupe was kind of blah, eh, didn't like it. Navy, you could do a navy for sure. You could do a navy blazer if you can get the blues to match. But if you can't, I would suggest doing a white blazer. And then I I styled it with some silver jewelry. The it's a there it's a three different pen, silver pendants in uh, circles because the pattern also has circles. So I'm trying to keep everything in harmony uh, with with the pattern, and the colors, and everything. And silver will look lovely on her because she is a summer. She could also wear gold, but in this in this case, I think silver probably looks best. And uh, I would suggest for the bottoms that she wear navy on the bottom. If she's going to wear this around, this is not a casual color for her. Navy um, with with true red is our power are basically power colors for most people. This is something that you would wear to address your occasion or to work in a more professional environment. If she wants to add a little fun, she could certainly find some true red pants. Be she would be super cute, she, uh, or navy. I would not go light because it's gonna offer too much contrast in the outfit. We're trying to sort of kind of tone things down and calm down that pattern. Navy would be the best complement to this blouse, okay? If you have a similar request, you like to save an outfit or, or try to figure out how to style something so it works better for you, by all means, please send me a request to Style Club at outfitsideasforyou.com. That's Outfit Ideas, the number four, Y-O-U.com. Hit, hit me up with a note. Let me know what's going on. Send me a photo, and we can style it via the uh, video cast and podcast. And as you notice, I kind of block out the face so that, you know, we're not exposing um, the person themselves unless it doesn't matter to you and that's cool too. Sometimes it helps to see someone's eyes and face when I'm doing this kind of a thing. Also when you send me your photos, send me it, send me your photo with you wearing the actual clothes. It really, really helps to see the person in the clothing. All right, so all right, now it's time to do a seasonal color analysis. Everyone know everyone looks forward to this and this one was fun. So let's jump right into uh, color analysis. All right, so this client sent me her photo. She's at the uh, salon and she has golden blonde hair that she colors and it's really hard to see her overall coloring in the photo but she's wearing a burgundy top and she's kind of light all over. Her eyes, the, the photograph makes her eyes look dark but I, they're lighter and I'll show you in our photo here in a minute. She tells me that her hair coloring is natural blonde, which is good to know for me. It's just that it's more golden because she, she has a color. My first gut reaction to the coloring of her hair is that it seems right. Sometimes I see photos with people who color their hair and something's not right, and it's usually because the color of the hair is so different from their natural hair color that it, it it's a mix to an analysis at first challenging until I know what's going on. I have a close-up of the eye on the video cast, and it's a little bit of a blurry eye, but what the takeaway here is is that the eye is a mix of uh, yellows, blues, and greens, which is very, very typical of a spring eye or even a tinted autumn eye. It's when you have those mix of colors. She's definitely warm. You don't see an eye like this on a winter or summer. Their eyes are typically blue and gray. Uh, not this warm mix of yellows and greens and blues. Okay, so she's she's definitely warm, and she has uh, you know, spring, what I think are spring eyes, but could also be tinted autumn eyes. She's got natural blonde hair and warm undertones. Okay, so 
what might you be? Now keep in mind that when I first did this analysis, this was back uh, when I was just doing the 12 seasons. So I'm going to explain to you how I did her analysis with the, using the 12 seasons, and then I'm going to share with you how my analysis changed a bit when I brought in the 16 seasons, okay? So my first guess was that she was a soft autumn. Uh, also known today as a toned autumn, perhaps, and uh, soft autumns, because her eyes weren't very bright and spring-like, they had that same kind of mix, but they seemed a little bit darker, I, and her skin doesn't really seem to be too light and delicate in coloring. I put her as an autumn. Well, the thing is, with only three types of autumns, you've got your deep autumn, you have your soft autumn, and you have your warm autumn. She's not warm. I mean, like she doesn't have auburn hair. Uh, she doesn't read that warm to me, and she's certainly not deep. Her eyes and her hair and her skin are very light. So soft autumn might be an option. However, when I drape her in soft autumn colors, which are muted and rich, they they she just looks her actually her face kind of pops out of the the screen. She does not look right in these colors. Now the reason the other reason that I had draped her in soft autumn is because of the burgundy shirt she's wearing, which is a soft autumn color. I thought that that might you know, maybe maybe she knows better than me, but too intense for her really doesn't uh, work for her. So the other option for me within the 12 seasons was a light spring because she has the lighter eyes, the lighter skin, and the lighter hair. She's certainly not a pure, clear spring. Uh, she'd have to have much higher contrast eyes for that. And she's certainly not a warm spring where you have the more strawberry blonde, warmer, toastier skin she definitely would have to be a light spring. And so that is actually where I settled with her on her analysis. I put her in light spring. She did look good, much better than in a toned or a soft autumn. Uh, and you know what? We settled on, on light spring because those were the two choices that I had. And I uh, wanted her to kind of wear some of the softer colors within the light spring, but didn't really always, it wasn't as, Oh, I just wasn't as satisfied with the analysis as I wanted to be. So um, we left it at that. Once I introduced the 16 seasons, I went back into her photos and um, did another did another analysis on her. And now I had my hands tinted autumn. Now what tinted autumn is is it is very similar to toned autumn, except that it's lighter. Soft autumn was divided because not everybody fit in that soft autumn color palette. It was a little too deep for a lot of people. And uh, the tinted autumn is the lighter version of it. And so the colors are a little bit lighter, they're a little bit brighter than the soft, the original soft autumn colors. And so when I draped her in tinted autumn, I love her in tinted autumn. When you look at the photo with her draped in tinted autumn, she blends beautifully into the background of colors. This is how I usually know that I'm on track because although people could argue with me that uh, online analysis with just photo photographs is inaccurate, I would disagree because one of the benefits is, is that I can place the, the person, cut out the background of the photograph, put them on you know, place them on the actual color palettes so that becomes the background of the photograph. And what happens after I've kind of color adjusted the, the original photograph so that the, it's not too blue or too yellow, a person will naturally kind of blend in when the colors are right. And they will just not when the colors are wrong. They kind of, they just everything looks wrong. It kind of looks like they pop out of the pop out of the photograph and she looks great. Her golden blonde hair looks great with the golden colors and the reds that I put on her are a little bit nicer, a little bit more saturation than the original burgundy shirt and she looks great. And this is a great example of how that those extra four seasons really make a difference helping someone find their season. So she became a tinted autumn. When I sent that to her, she got really excited because those seem so much more right than the tinted, or excuse me, the light spring, now known as the tinted spring. And um, 
and so yeah so that's that is that she is a tinted autumn okay so uh, if you want to find more examples of the analysis that I've done with the photographs and everything please visit the blog at alphabetideas4u.com. That's number four, y-o-u.com. You can also uh, send me a note if you want more information on how you can be uh, analyzed. It's at styleclub at alphabetideas4u.com. And, you know, it is a paid service, but so go ahead and send me a note. Let me know what's going on, and I can uh, kind of direct you and what's best for you. Because sometimes just the analysis, uh, the online quiz is all you need, and sometimes you need you might want some actual professional assistance to help you find your season. All right? Sounds good, I think, to me. So let's get into the last segment of this podcast. Just between you and me, resistance is futile. Okay, I know. That's a totally lame reference to Star Trek. I think it's Star Trek. I don't know, I'm not even that big of a fan, but I did grow up on the show. But there is something to be said about that phrase, resistance is futile. And here is what I mean. And I and by the way, I'm going to share you I'm going to share with you a story and 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 I hope that the story I uh, can resonate with you at some level and and um, help you deal with changes in your life. Okay? So at some point during my marriage, about, hmm, I guess maybe five years ago now, for, as of recording this episode, uh, we started having trouble in our marriage. And uh, I won't get into all the details of why, but it, things just weren't working out. And it's interesting because the reaction was to try really, really hard to uh, you know, well, we have to get, we have to get counseling and, and we have to, we have to try all these things. And, and my husband at the time really, really pushed things really hard. He, he tried really hard because he didn't want to, you know, uh, he didn't want to break up. And, and, and I'm not by any means promoting that divorce is the right solution or that you shouldn't try. Don't, please don't misunderstand me. But sometimes when you feel like you are pushing uphill so hard everything becomes hard and I wonder sometimes that if things had been had sort of just if he had just sort of backed up and myself included and sort of kind of let things settle and maybe flow a little bit easier even if it wasn't the right defin the right definition of what we think uh, a marriage or relationship should be, uh, maybe it would have gotten easier and better, and maybe not. After we had separated, one of my fears was that I was not going to have my friends anymore. I had to have two very good friends, uh, all three couples. We're very close. We vacation together, and uh, outside of the pain and loss of separating from uh, a family that I basically grew up with, I was also going to be potentially leaving behind my friends because you never know where their allegiance is going to be, and are they going to take sides or you just you just don't know well, really and so it's it's scary sometimes to to just to make a decision to to leave a relationship when you have so many years uh, built up we had 16 years of marriage and and we had a much longer time before that where we because we grew up together in high school we weren't necessarily high school sweethearts but I had been with his family since I was 14 years old so it you know I'm 43 now I, we I said I'm still uh, I still we we're still very friendly. I love I love his family. I would and it was a very difficult decision for me. Well, going through that kind of a change, and in my life, I can tell you that I, I still wanted desperately to hold on to things in a way that was my definition of what I think or have thought things should be. So when it wasn't like that, uh, I got really angry. My friends 
weren't doing anything wrong, but they were spending a lot of time with my then ex-husband. I wasn't getting called to hang out with them like we used to. We used to live across the street from them, so I could literally just walk across the street and hang out, and it was no big deal, but now that I didn't live that close, you have, there's more energy and and uh, effort to spare to spend you have to call up you got to make plans you got to do all these things and it just wasn't happening that way and I just started to get angry because I just I wanted and I guess in a way expected things to be the way they were before even though logically it made sense that it's, it's going to be different and, and I had feared that it was going to be different and maybe because of the fear and maybe because I had such a definite definition of what my relationship with my friends should be, that when it wasn't that, um, I I fought it. I you know I didn't fight with them, but I fought that that definition that well I, this isn't good enough, and so it caused me to be angry and it caused me to be resentful and and hurt. My feelings were hurt because it, it they the relationship with them wasn't the way it used to be, and and you know I. The angrier I got, you know, the worse of a friend I was, I think. And it wasn't until I finally had made peace and realized that what we are right now as friends is is okay and, and perfect for what it is. And that it's okay that we don't see each other as often anymore. And that it's okay that, you know, they don't call me as often, I don't call them as often. It doesn't mean that we're not friends. It just simply means we have a new uh, picture of what our friendship is. And when I finally calmed down and stepped back and looked and said, there's nothing wrong with this relationship. It's just simply different from what it was before. And now I'm okay. And I'm, oh my goodness, once I let that go, the energy was, I let all that anger and resistance go, I am so much happier. I, I, it, I really became a much happier person. It, it, that's what I mean when res, resistance, when, you, when you're just, you're pushing up against something that isn't naturally going that way, it can cause so much angst and so much, and so, so much stress and unhappiness. And when you finally can just step back and go, this is the way it is, and then it's okay, because this is the new definition, this is the new picture of things. And when that happened, I, I was a much happier person. And now when I see them, I don't feel hurt. I'm just happy to see them. There's an, air, there's an airplane, can you hear it? It's, it's a little loud. <laughs> um, so, I hope that that story resonates with you. I know and I see a lot of people who are going through lots of different changes in their lives, whether it's divorce, new relationships, um, whatever it is. And it's so easy to get caught up in what we think things are supposed to be. And when they're not the way that they're supposed to be, we get really caught up in the drama of a well, why isn't it. But sometimes it's really helpful to take a step back and look at what it truly is try to take out the emotion if you can and see if it's if it's okay it nothing's wrong nothing's wrong it's just different and if that's okay then it's okay and if it's not well then it's not and you need to either leave or, or do something about it I'm not saying you should be a you know be pushed over or anything like that but okay that is what I have for you guys Thank you very much for listening and watching episode number two of The Jen Thoden Show. I am Jen Thoden. If you'd like to learn more about what all the kinds of cool stuff that's out on the blog, please do so at alphaideasforyou.com. That's number four, you.com. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe on the YouTube channel and subscribe on the podcast if you're listening. In fact, let me get you the YouTube channel. Oh, the YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash user slash Jen Thoden, J-E-N-T-H-O-D-E-N. -E -E please visit there and subscribe. And if you have something that you'd like to comment, please come out to the blog, visit the, the uh, 
episode on the blog and comment. I'd love to hear from you and hear any feedback that you might have. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in another episode.